Okay, I'm about to blow some minds and also piss a lot of people off. Typical for me. In the words of Dr. Bliss, this will not go well. You know that germs have never been proven, scientifically proven, to be the cause of any illness? I guess if we just throw out Koch's postulate. But blaming bacteria, fungus mold for illness, for disease, has never happened in a scientific study. In fact, they failed so badly that they stopped doing those studies, like I think in the 40s or something, or 50s. Okay, it turns out we need some science history. I mean, first off, we gotta understand that, yeah, we stopped doing those kinds of experiments because they're not ethical. They're still done in mice. I mean, a lot. Research in mice happens a lot in which researchers give them a condition and then monitor how they do. Researchers understood that things could pass from person to person from the 1500s and believed that it might have to do with microbes. It was not until 1672 in which Van Leeuwenhoek made a microscope and observed the first bacteria. Oh, but it gets far worse. You have to understand, until Louis Pasteur demonstrated that pasteurization works, people were not entirely sure if microbes just grew spontaneously. Spontaneous generation. Yes, people at that point still understood that germs existed, they just weren't entirely sure where they came from. Thank you, Louis demonstrated in the 1800s that if you heated chicken broth to a certain temperature, that it would not spoil. Demonstrating that spontaneous generation was false and germs, in fact, exist. There's also a decent amount of work on refrigeration, which apparently slows the progression of spoilage of food. This is why we use refrigerators. And that lady is also why I refuse to eat at other people's houses. Even going to a restaurant is questionable. Let me introduce you to Florence Nightingale. Yes, in around the 1850s, she worked as a nurse during the Crimean War. She believed that if you washed your instruments before performing surgery, it would result in less mortality, and it did. She also championed washing bedding and keeping fleas from biting people, because apparently, since the 1700s, people still hadn't gotten it in their heads that you do not want stuff biting you. She lowered mortality significantly. She also worked in midwifery and lowered mortality for expectant mothers. At its worst, one in 100 mothers would lose their lives from childbirth. Enter Ignis Semmelweis, also worked with expectant mothers, and he ended up in an institution. He was put in an asylum for telling doctors that they really should wash their surgical instruments because you are giving your patients infections. There's a lot of debate on exactly why he went to an asylum. Apparently he was very anxious and people felt that it was unreasonable. Also, lowered mortality rates. Wash your instruments before putting them in people. Really, I feel very bad for Ignis. Evidently, the woman who made that video also does not believe that viruses exist. And honestly, I want to say it's rage bait, but I've met a lot of people who think that the earth is flat. What prevents you from petting the angry raccoon in your yard? Because for me, I don't have a lot of self-preservation instincts and, you know, I, I want to. My fear of rabies keeps me from doing it. Also, those little teeth, once they puncture your skin, can send bacteria into your bloodstream. When I was 12 years old, I was bitten by a very angry cat. I ended up with septicemia and septic shock. Nature is brilliant and has these mechanisms built in that help us to clean up decay, help us clean up dead. Spent a week in the ICU and they almost took my hand, but I still got it thanks to vancomycin. So the, the rabbit hole on that particular post gets weird. This person evidently does not believe in STIs and thinks that bacterial infections have to do with your feelings. Um, just get your vaccinations and take your antibiotics, please, and wash your surgical instruments. Wash your hands.